This is the FSU School of Theater Scene Shop tutorial on the bandsaw. So this is our bandsaw. It has a blade that is a complete band that goes in this direction, so it's coming down at your material. This is the blade guard, so you want to make sure that this is in place. Depending on the thickness of your material will determine the height that you want to set this blade guard at. So to adjust that height, on the back side here there's a knob. Loosen that knob before you turn this crank to adjust the height of the blade guard. Again, don't have more blade exposed than you need. It just provides additional risk area. Once you have it located at the height you want, tighten that knob back in place so that it doesn't shift on you. Um, some other features that you'll need to adjust, or you may need to adjust, there is a top bearing here that's behind the blade. It needs to be close, but not touching. Um, additionally, there are two guide plates on the sides. They need to be close, but not touching. The same features are located below this table. A different looking bearing that's behind the blade, again, close, but not touching. And then those guide plates, close, but not touching. All of those will help keep the blade tracking correctly. Even when there's pressure against the blade, those bearings will move and keep the blade tracking correctly. And those guide plates will keep it from shifting side to side so that you get a good cut. Once you are ready to begin your cut, position your material on the table but away from the blade. Turn the saw on here with the start button. It will start the dust collection system as well and then you feed your material in. Remember the blade is just traveling down, so it's not traveling into the material. You control the feed of the material. Don't be too aggressive, let the blade do the work. As you feed the material in, you may be following your line, you may turn the material. Turn with the back side of the material, keep your hands away from the blade. So keep this hand away from the blade, turn with the back side of the material. As you're going along, you may find it wander away from your line. Feed it all the way out through the waste area of your material. If you're saving both pieces and you have to stop, stop with the material where it's located, let the blade come to a stop, put a piece of scrap material there, and retrieve your piece. Never bring the piece back towards you during a cut or without providing the stopping and that uh, scrap piece to hold it in place while you remove it. You could bring the blade off of the two wheels, the top and bottom wheels. So you complete your cut, stop the saw, and then you can retrieve your material and push waste material away. Try to keep your hands away from the blade even when the tool is stopped. Just get into a good practice of keeping your hands away from the blade. Um, Additionally, you may find that you want a fence. There's a fence available. There's a miter gauge that fits into a track here. There's also an ability for the table to tilt on this side. There's a table mechanism uh, uh, lock and a indicator so you can tilt the material, give yourself an angled cut on this piece. Um, so various features that you may find helpful to you. Additionally, there's a pair of gloves over here. The gloves are not for you to use while the tool is in operation. The gloves are just for handling the saw blades when changing a saw blade. Um, there's also information about uh, the, the tool itself. There's the tool manual available here, as well as the other information that we talked about here during this training. This has been the tool training for the FSU School of Theater Bandsoft.